So far, we have been working with three steps, select hotel, select rooms, and initial summary. These steps are part of our planned reservation process, which is in the initiate reservation stage. By the end of the upcoming videos, we will have a new authentication stage that will look and work something like this. After the user selects the hotel and the rooms, they will be required to authenticate by logging in. They will have the option to sign up if they don't have an account already. Just as a disclaimer, with this authentication stage, we are playing pretend. It's not a real Pega account that the user will be logging into. Instead, we will create a data type with username and password, which will be used as credentials. So new accounts can be created. In the sign up process, they will need to give the required information to create an account and the system will check if the username is available before creating it. After creating the account, the user will return to the login step. If the username and password match, the user will proceed to the next stage. So let's talk about the case life cycle in Pega. So in Pega, we have this thing called case type, which is composed by one or more stages. A stage can have many processes, and the process is composed by one or more steps. In both Dev and App Studio, we have this landing page to visualize and do some light editing in our case types. But if we go in Dev Studio to the App Explorer, we are able to see the actual rules behind these case types. By expanding in Work Reservation, the process category, we have three important rule types, case type, flow, and flow action. In case type, we will have a rule, PY default, which will have all the configuration for our case type. In flows, we will have a rule for each process that we create. And in flow action, we'll have a rule for each step that we create. As you can imagine, our PY default case type rule references flow rules, and the flow rules reference flow action rules. For example, by the end of this video, we'll have this configuration. So if we open the PY default rule, go to stages and authentication, we will have two processes, login and sign up. Then, if we open the sign up process, we will see our flow actions, personal details, credentials, and account details. So, let's get started. To begin, let's lay out the things that we will be needing. In our case life cycle, we need a new stage, two processes, and some steps. Then, for our fields, we will need a new page property that we will name account page, which will need to reference to a new data type, which we will name account. Okay, so let's begin by creating our authentication stage. Let's open our case type, and we are going to click here, add stage to case type. I'm going to name my stage authentication, and now let's add a new process. So let's click on these three dots, add process, and we have here two options, new process or new multi-step form. For this, I'm going to add a new process. I'm going to rename my process to authenticate and the step is going to be named login. Next, I'm going to create the sign up process. So once again, I'm going to click here, add process, but this time I'm going to use the multi-step form. 
The difference between the new form and the multi-step form is that the user can navigate backwards and forwards. So if they want to change the information in a previous step, they can do that. But in a normal form, you once you go to the next step, you can't go back to the previous step. So this process, I'm going to name it sign up. The first step is going to be personal details. The second step is going to be credentials. And the last step is going to be account details. Let's start creating the views for each step. Let's start with login. So for this, we will need a new property. Well, we will need a page property for this. Let's add a new field. This is going to be an embedded page. I'm going to name it account page. The data object, well, we are going to create a new one. I'm going to name it account. Now let's click submit. All right, so we have our account data type and we also have this account page property. Now let's create the views and when creating the views, we will be creating the fields for this data type. So let's create a new view. And I'm going to name this view as login, the same as this one. You can name it wherever you want, but I'm going to choose to use the same name. So for this login section, what do we want to have? Well, we want to have the username and the password. You can see here that we have our login section, and if we go back, we will have our also login section. The thing is that this login belongs to our reservation case type, and this login belongs to our account data type. Let me click submit, and let's start with the next section. So for the personal details section, I want the first name and the last name. I'm not going to create a new field. Instead, what I want to do is to find my account page property that I already created, and I'm going to add it. Now we have our login view, but I'm going to create a new view for this. I'm going to name it personal details. And I'm going to add the first and last name. Now let's go to credentials, find our account page, create a new view. And for this, I'm going to use username and password. For the last one, I'm going to use all of the fields that I have created. So let's see how this looks. I'm going to save and run. Okay, so in this first section, I want to get rid of the account page title and I also want to add a checkbox for the sign up. So let's start by opening this section. Let's go to App. Let's go to our App Explorer and let's expand Reservation, User Interface, Section and let's open our login section. So here we have this section, which has a title. To get rid of, of the title, go to edit. And in general, go to container settings and above it, you can have a caption. In this case, I'm going to select none.
And as you can see, this section is called login and is in your class work reservation. If I open this section, its ID is the same, it's also called login, but it belongs to a different class, data account. Now I want to edit this section to add a checkbox. So here I'm going to click add, go to pickers and add a checkbox. Something I learned is that in each class level, we have access to certain hidden unused properties. These properties are very useful for when you don't want to create new properties for a one-time use. For example, do we really want to create a property for this sign-up checkbox? No. If you write down the dot icon, you will see that you have the four properties that we created. First name, last name, username, and password. But if we go to more, you will see a lot of properties. Most of them are not used. I like to go for the ones that start with PYTemp. We have PYTemp date, PYTemp decimal, PYTemp double. We also have others like PYTemp text. Now, for this checkbox, I need a property that can hold a true or false value. I know this one that is named PYTemp true false, so I'm going to use that. And for this checkbox, I'm going to add the sign up uh, caption. So this value, each time that we change it, it will be on our account page because our account page is of this class. Okay, so let's go to the next view. Here I want to get rid of the title as well. Here I want to get rid of the title as well, but I also want to add the confirm password field. And we are going to do the same as we did with the checkbox. We are going to use one of the properties that we have access to that we can use for this kind of things. In this case, I'm going to use py temp text. And now let's edit this section to make it read only. And I'm going to make this title to say account created. Go to presentation, read only. So that will make all of the fields that are inside this section read only. And for the caption, I'm going to say account created. And I'm going to add an icon for this uh, title, just for fun. And I'm going to change how this is displayed. There is one template that I like for presenting information. This one. 
So this places the labels to the left and the values to the right. There we have it. And by the way, this is what I meant by the difference between the regular form step and the multi-step form. You are able to go back and forward in the steps. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we will start talking about report definition and how we can use it to validate an account. So that's also something that we are going to create the records for our account data type that we just created.